and they told him, love his wife as himself. What is the wife? What is the wife? Obedient. She's supposed to be obedient. Submit. Submit. Yes. Yes. And we found this in what part of the Bible? Ephesians. Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5, 22, right through. Correct? Yes. Very good. And when we were speaking about relationship, we spoke about communication, right? And we said communication had three components. Listening. Listening. Talking. And understanding. So when we are when we are when we are when we are communicating there must always be three things always three things one there must be talk or talking or speaking the second one we must listen and the third is understanding. And the reason is because when we are talking, there must be a time when the other person is listening. So what I said, I think it was last week and the week before, if I'm talking and you are listening to me, what is your name? Huh? Lover? Lavini? Lavinia. 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 If I'm talking and I'm speaking French, do you understand French? So I'm talking, you are listening. But if I'm speaking French, are we are you, do you understand me? So we will not be communicating. So those are the three components that must always be present when we are communicating. And then we move on to what is commanded of the wife and what is commanded of the husband. Now, I was going to push through with another segment, but the Holy Ghost laid on my heart and, and another topic that relates to what we're dealing. And that is covering. So I'm going to erase this. So based on what we did for the last two weeks, are we together so far? Are there any questions? Because we, I don't want to move on if, 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 if there is no understanding. There must be clear understanding. So if there is no question, we can move on, correct? Yes. All right, what we're gonna deal with this week is covering. And the reason why I want to deal with covering is to tie in, is to tie in. Sure, no problem. Now, when we hear the word covering, what comes to mind? Protecting. Got it? Protecting. Protecting. Okay, look at protection. Covering. Guiding. Huh? Guiding. Guiding. Conceal. Conceal. Give me another word. Shelter. Shelter. Yeah. See, Pastor, can I have your help with the Bible? Sure, please. I hope everybody bring their Bible. This is Bible study. <laughs> I see Bibles. I see book. Very good. 
The next time you come, my dear, you have a Bible? Take out your Bible. It's Bible study. I need to the word, huh? You didn't? Okay. You want to come closer here so that you're okay? All right, good. Because we want, this is the word. This is the word. We're dealing with the word. All right. I want, the first thing I want to look at is Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 7 and 8. When I was looking for passages as it relates to covering, I want us to go back to Genesis when uh, uh, Ezekiel, Ezekiel 16, 7 to 8. Can somebody read it for me? Because there are some words that I need to pull out for that passage. Ezekiel 16, 7 to 8. Yes. I have caused thee to multiply as the board of the field, and thou hast increased and waxing great, and thou hast come to excellent ornament. Thy breasts are fashioned, and thy hair is grown, whereas thou wast naked and bare. Now when I passed by thee, I looked upon thee, behold, that time was the time of love, and I spread my skirt over thee, and covered thy nakedness. Ye, I swore unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God, and thou becamest mine. Okay, from that passage, the first word that I took out from it is created. The second word I took from it is naked. The third is covered. Nakedness. The fourth covenant. And you became One, two, three, four, five. That's what I got from that, that passage. I want us to look at these, these four words because they are very important. Now, when we go back to the beginning of time, God created Adam. He created Adam first. If we look at Genesis 1.26, as you know, every week we go, we are going through the same passages, but we are pulling, we are pulling different things from these passages because it has to zero and tie home with the subject matter that we are dealing with. Genesis 1, 26. Who have it? Can you please read it for me, please? And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Good. Now, we see here creation. God created Adam, he created Eve. But if you go further down, who was created first? Adam was created first. Now, when God gave that commandment further down, Adam was created, Eve was not created yet. Now let us look at the command that God gave Adam and Eve. Let us go into further down, Genesis. Genesis 2, 16. Genesis 2, 16. Yes. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Okay. I want you to underline the word in that passage. I want you to under underline three words. 
as we are going, right? Well, I, I, want to, I want us to go a little bit deeper. I want us to highlight the word, the Lord God, command, and he shall not eat. And the consequences, which otherwise in the day you eat, you will certainly die. So, we have a command. What is the command? Do not eat, correct? Mm -hmm. What is the consequence if you eat? Surely die. Sure. Go back now, further up, where we have the benefit. Genesis 1, 26. Let us make man. Let us make man. What we have? Creation, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. What is the promise? Dominion over the earth. The promise? To mean beyond over the earth. When God created Adam and Eve, they were naked. Yeah. Good. Did they know they were naked? Yeah. No. Nope. No. Nope. They did not know they were naked. And we're going to go oh, we're going to go into that a little after. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Now, when we are looking at the covering of the nakedness, we have to go into covenant. Covenant is twofold. When you are looking at a covenant, there is a thing called detriment, and there is a thing called benefit. The detriment is we having to follow that commandment. The benefit is the promise. The command is the detriment because it has consequences. So whenever God makes a covenant with man, it's twofold. And there were some scholars who look at whether when Adam was told not to eat of the fruit, whether it was a covenant. Now, if you look at Hosea 6, Verse 7, it speaks of a covenant. Hosea 6, 7. Hosea 6, verse 7. But they, like men, have transgressed the covenant. They have they dealt treacherously against me. Okay, which version are you reading from? The King James? King James? Mm -hmm. Good. The Amplified says, but they, like Adam, have transgressed the covenant. There, they have dealt treacherously against me. So we understand that, yes, there was a covenant between man and Adam. Are we together? Yes. Now, when I look at the word covenant, basically saying God make a promise to his people and requires a certain conduct from them. It involves a benefit and a detriment. Are we together? Yes. Good. Now, we're still, this, this is our main, our, our main focus here. These elements right here. The covenant, when you enter, are you, are you seeing what When you enter into the covenant, then you get your nakedness covered. When you lose, when you are in breach of the covenant, you haven't followed the commandment, you lose your covering. It's a principle. And this principle is from the beginning of time. 
When I started this segment, I said, God purpose for us will never ever change. If God call you to do something and you choose not to do it, God purpose is not going to be a uh, 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 change or anything he's going to find somebody else to fulfill that purpose because god for a purpose will always be fulfilled so when we are looking at man and there is a covering that god designed for man these are the elements that we first look at for you to get a benefit you must do something to get that benefit and if we are following the principles of of scriptures we can never go wrong if we follow the principles because it's there for us. Covering, commandment. Covering, commandment. Covering, commandment. Covering, it, it works hand in hand. If you get your covering, it means that you have to do something to get that covering. All right? Are we together? Yes. Amen. All right. Um, can I erase this? Yeah. Okay. I don't want to erase it because I have to go a little bit further because I want that to... To, to stay to stay here again. Now, let us look at Adam. Adam was created, but was he created too? No. no. Eve was created after Adam. So the covenant was made with who? Adam. Adam. You remember when the snake came to Eve? What did Eve told the snake? What did Eve tell the serpent? What did Eve say? Eat of all the trees. They eat of all the fruits of the trees of the garden. Yeah. But of the fruits of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. But who did God told the commandment to? Adam. He told Adam. Was Eve created yet? No. Eve was not created. So it, it lends to reason that Adam must have told Eve, you know, God said we don't do this. Because she was not given those specific commandments. If you read, if you read the word, Eve was created later on. So it stands to reason that when God gave Adam the commandment, he was told later on of what she was not supposed to do. Because the covering for her came from the husband because of the covenant that God made with him. So it is the husband that gives the covering for the wives. And it starts from Adam and Eve. But they were physically naked. Physically, but they didn't know. Spiritually, were they naked? No. 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 Why? Because they never knew. Because they never knew. Why? They never knew they were naked. They never knew they were naked. They did not sin. They didn't sin. Yeah. But they still had the covering. Yeah. And what is so? What is so? What is so fundamental is that. They did not know. They were protected and they did not know. And it's the same thing with husband and wife today. The husband is supposed to cover his wife. And a lot of women do not know. I was one of them. I did not know. I did not know that I had this priceless commodity of being covered by my husband. And that is why the Bible said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Because if the wife don't understand this fundamental principle that she is being covered by her husband, she's not going to understand the, the consequences of her not submitting. Because when you have a covenant, and the covenant is made with the man, that covenant is between God and the man. He is supposed to love his wife. The wife is supposed to submit. But if the wife submit and encourages her husband, support her husband, she is helping him to be in compliance with the law. 
and she benefits. She benefits not only because of the covering, she benefits from everything else based on the covering that she gets and based on everything else that the man has to give her. So when we are looking at submission, I want ladies, it's most, mostly ladies here, I want ladies to understand how important it is to submit. It is not a bad thing. It is beneficial to us. A lot of women see, if I submit, it means that I am, he, I, I, I am beneath him. That's not what submit means. It means that you have submit to his covering, ladies. His covering. If you look at the king of the jungle, the lion, if you look at wolves, you have the alpha male. The alpha male, the male goes in the front, and the male goes in the back. And the herd is in the middle to protect them to protect them and ladies we need to understand we need protection because god designed us that way he said we are help mates we are not the head mates we are help mates it's a role designed for us for our benefit ladies if i was to go back and choose whether I want to be protected or I want to be the protector, and if I have to decide again, I would choose to be protected because it is hard being a protector because it, God did not design our, our, our minds, our bodies to protect males. He didn't. And God is a God of purpose. When he designed it that way, it is for our benefit. When we are looking at the male and we see the male and we say, I am not going to submit to him because he's this and he's that. A lot of women choose not to submit. It's not a choice. It's not a choice. It brings benefit to us ladies. It brings benefit and I can't, I can't stress it enough. All right? Now, are there any questions? Because if we're not together, I can't move on. I need questions. I need. Let me ask questions. Let me let me let me get let me get. Miss mm. Angela, Sister Angela, what do you believe would be the benefits of being protected as a wife? You will get a covering. When you look at covering, what comes to mind for you? What, what benefits you get from that covering? From the covering. Uh -huh. Respect. Respect. What else? Okay. If a husband is covering you, do you expect him to defend you in your time of need? Yes. If your husband is covering you, do you expect him to say you supposed to be the breadwinner? I'm getting in some some ground so because he I want to provoke. That. I want to provoke thought. He won't say it. Hmm? He won't say that I'm supposed to be the breadwinner. Okay. So what do you what do you understand from being the helpmate? Well, be the breadwinner. Mm -hmm. Both of us is the breadwinner. Okay. Because I'm to be my friend. Okay. But in that role where two are earning an income, because it is in most households, correct? Mm -hmm. Two are earning the income. Who would take the lead? I said the man is supposed to take the lead. The man but should take the lead. But sometimes the woman can lead in certain things. That's not 
point. You always say the man take the lead, but sometimes the man is not to listen to the woman too. Because sometimes the woman might be right, she might be more spiritual than the man. Remember, when you walk down the aisle, and I think senior pastor said it very last week when we talked about covering. When you walk down the aisle, and this is where a lot of women are having a difficult time with, you make him your Lord. The Bible said he is your head in all things not some, all things. Because if you change the script and you say in some things, I'm going to be the head, then you are changing that covenant. The covenant that he have, he have with God. And it is the because of that covenant, because he's complying with the covenant, gives you the covering. So when women do not submit, it makes it harder for the man to, to, to keep in compliance with his commandment. I know you don't agree. No, because I mean, you can say, you're calling your husband Lord. And I'm saying, I'm saying, when you get married, when you get married, he becomes the Lord over your life. And that is why, that is why so many problems. I know I was there. My dear, I was there. And that's why I am led, I'm led by the Holy Ghost to, to teach this. Let me, let me, let me yes. interject um, quickly. Um, the word Lord means that you are in charge. Right? So, if I'm in charge of my home, that means I am the, the Lord in that home. I am the king in that home. So regardless, because when Jesus, when Jesus um, sent out the man to be with the wife, he says, he didn't say go, he said, he never said he that find it a, a, a woman. He said he that find it a wife. That simply means the wife can't be married because if you're married, you're already a wife. Yes. Right, so then you have to be single so that you can become a wife. Yes. Now the head, no, he didn't tell the woman to go and look for a husband, mm -hmm. right? He tell the man, he that find it a wife, mm -hmm. find it a good thing mm -hmm. and obtain favor of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now there's a special favor is on the woman, mm -hmm. right? So when the man married to the woman, that yes. favor come upon him. Mm -hmm. And then the woman is an help mate, mm -hmm. so she has to submit. But the Bible says that the woman must submit to the king, mm -hmm. which is the man. And the, the man must love his wife as though Christ loved the church. Mm -hmm. So the husband is the head. He is the king. It's just like you have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So it is it's three in one. So it's just like in a, in a ministry, mm -hmm. right? When you come to a ministry, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. I am the small God in here, but I am the one who put in charge because all of us are small gods, right? Because we are the image of God, right? Mm -hmm. So then when we come to the, to the ministry now and God put an egg there, the oil from the ear of Aaron, that's why we read the Bible to understand the ear, the, the oil from the ear of the ear of Aaron run down and trickle down and come down into the church. Mm -hmm. Now the servant that God has placed in the church, he is the egg over the ministry. So everybody that comes after submit under that, that ministry. And so they submit to that authority mm -hmm. and the leadership of that ministry. You remember when Paul um, was in, um, he's in Corinthian, uh, one of them, he writes a letter, uh, because the ladies that was rebelling in the church mm -hmm. and they were getting on this disorderly in the church. And he said to them, let the, the woman Shut her mouth until she go home. She asks her husband question. Mm -hmm. Because if eh? because remember, right, in the church, right? The, if you look at churches today, mm -hmm. no disrespect to ladies. The most rebellious people is ladies. I can tell you. If you look in a church today, it, the, the, the rebellious people that, that come against the, the leadership and come against the word and all these things is always being ladies, right? Because they always love to to to, to, to come forth. 
You understand? And to and to listen. You understand what what the word of the Lord is saying. So as we go forward, what we we as as Ed always love to do is to put things in place. So the husband is now putting things in place. Now we are not saying that all the husband is nice husband and goody goody husband. You understand? Because you have some husband don't take their responsibility, mm -hmm. right? But that don't mean make him a lesser person than who he's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because God has bring forth the covenant, mm -hmm. and there is a covenant from God mm -hmm. to the man. Amen. I pray yeah. that I make sense. Yeah, amen. 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 Add to what that says. Yes. Now let me add to it. Let's go back to the Bible now. If we go back to, I always like to stick with Bible. Genesis chapter three. After Adam and Eve sinned, look at verse. Look at verse sixteen. Two. Genesis chapter three, verse sixteen. If you have your Bible turned there, the Bible says, "Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow shall thou bring forth children." Now, this is where it gets very interesting. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over you. Pastor and senior pastor have gone ahead of me. Oh, because I'll just put in my list. Okay. <laughs> No problem. I just wanted to yes, straighten that. Not, her yeah, question. Not to override or anything. Yes. Just trying to straighten that. Yes, I understand. Yes. I understand. But uh, uh, Sister Angela, like like I like I said, when I was growing up in the church, I got married at eighteen, and I had a difficult time accepting this. And the reason being is because I was not properly taught. I rejected it because I felt that I was this independent woman. I felt that I was this woman that um, I was not going to be subject to a man. Um, he's less educated than I, he's blah, 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 blah. And, and, and I erred. I erred. And because I erred, it became a disaster. I have been there. And when I am sharing this, is for other women not to go through what I went through. Because when I started to read this, my lesson was not about this. The Holy Ghost led me to this lesson, to this particular lesson. And the Holy Ghost showed me things that nobody taught me. Nobody taught me. Because had I known that in submitting it would be a benefit, it would have been easier for me. Because even though the man is, is, is commanded to love, and I would say, well, you're not loving me, so I am not going to submit. No, 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 no. It, 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 you are not the enforcer of God's commandment. Ladies, hear me very well. We are not the enforcer. And that is why when I started my first lesson, I said, before you get married, you must understand your role before you get married. Know who you are. It's like a senior pastor said, know who you are going to make this person become a Lord in your life. It, 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 and and, and the, the Lord is in the context of, of what Prophet has explained. Now, if you're going down the aisle with this bad person, you must be wise. Choose who your partner is going to be. Choose who, because this man is going to be your head. This man is going to lead you. And if you know, if you know that you cannot be led by this man, don't do it. Don't do it. And that's why a lot of pastors, they go through counseling with their, with, 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 with their congregation. You're going to get married? Do counseling because you, if, if the woman don't understand it, it's like I said a week or last week, you're joining a basketball team. What role do you play? Are you the center? Are you the guard? You bring down the ball? Are you the center? You have your roles that you play. You play football. You have your role. God designed role because he said, let all things be done decently and in order. So when you're looking at the marriage relationship, the marriage produced children, it is for continuity. And God is not going to, 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 to have his people running all over the place without guidance, without discipline, without order. So when ladies, whenever you're contemplating, you want to, do you, do you see this person leading you? Do you really see this person being your head in 
Not one, not two. In all things, that is a decision that you make. Because nobody will force you to get married. When you look at the definition of marriage, it is, it is a union in law. It is a union between a man and a woman for life. To the exclusion of all others. And it comes right down to what the Bible says. The man leaves his mother and, 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 and father and cleave onto his wife. When you look at the, 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 the legal definition. To the exclusion of all others. Just like the Bible. Because the Bible is our foundation from which we get our principles to live by so that everything will be done decently and in order. Are we together? Yes, sir. Thank you. So I hope that that has been cleared up. Now, when we look at the disobedience of Eve, when Eve disobeyed, the, she was tempted, but the order of the man and wife was for who to be the head? Adam. Who was to be the head? Adam. Adam. Because Adam was supposed to protect Eve. And he did not protect Eve. But Eve did not submit to Adam. Because if Eve had submitted to Adam, she would have gone to her husband and said, you know the, the, the devil, the, the, the snake come and tempt me. Which she could say, look, see, look, me coming back. I'm going to consult with my husband because he is my Lord. He is my head. He is my covering. He is my leader. I'm not going to make any decision without my husband. Her role is to submit. Her role was to submit. Adam's role was to lead because of the covenant. Adam chose to not lead. Adam chose to not lead Eve. Eve led Adam. What did Eve do? She saw the fruit was good. She, didn't, she, she did not even consult her husband. She went and she ate. And she not only ate, she gave him <laughs> who knew that he was not to eat. And he was the head. That is why the consequences, when God started to metal punishment, he said to the snake, oh, you did this? The woman, oh, you did this? Your husband, because of what you did, he will be ruled. He will rule over you. That's where the head come in. That's where the head come in. So when, when we look and we say, oh, I have to submit because of it is a principle. It is a principle. I'm going to tell you the truth. I did not agree with it. And I erred. I erred because it is not for me. I, am, I have no authority to disagree with God's word. I, that authority was not vested in me. It wasn't. And I erred. And I paid deeply for my mistake. And the last thing I want is for women that I see that are single or women that are married, that, that are erring or going into error. My function, my role here is for you to know the word. As the Holy Ghost teach me, I am going to teach you. Because I don't teach myself. I don't teach myself. So whatever the Holy Ghost tells me to teach, I am going to teach and I'm going to share it with you. Whatever I am sharing with you, it's scripture. It's nothing that I make up. I want you all to know that. Hear me very well. So Sister Angela, when it comes to that part, it is not a decision for you, my dear. Are we together? When you are talking about in some things we lead, in some things the woman lead. The Bible said, he is the head in all things. I'm not saying you're not so you're not consult. I say supplement. Huh? I say supplement. Okay. All right. So we together? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Now, the consequences, the consequences of 
disobeying is what? Disobeying. We lose. You lose. The consequence you have. The consequence is death and lost of covering. Who could remember what God, what, what Adam and Eve did as soon as they ate the fruit? What was the first thing that came to them? They realized what? They realized everything. Who tell them they were naked? Sin, sin, sin. Sin entered. Yep. And the realization. Ah, I'm naked. What's the first thing they did? Cover up the cover They went and cover up. Cover up. Because they were naked. And I'm looking at physical nakedness. And I'm looking at spiritual nakedness. That's the consequences. So when there is no submission and the husband will lose his covering, who get naked? The man get naked and the woman get naked. You see why it's important to submit? I didn't know. Ladies, do we want the covering? Do we have to pay for it? Do we have to pay for it? Do we have to pay for it? No. We don't have to pay for it. Our husbands give it to us. And all we need to do is to support, submit, so that it is easier for him. Amen. Amen. Can I interject again? Yes. Um, there was a lady. It was a pastor. She had her. her, her he had his wife, mm -hmm. and so the wife always seemed as just a, just a normal husband, and um, just you know just there as a husband and so on. So when she come church, she just sit down and look at him. She don't receive nothing from him. But what happened is that when he released the anointing upon people in the in the ministry, the people are receiving, and she there just going through her old days and going through her old days and one day she got to the Holy Ghost and, the, and asked the Holy Ghost, but why my husband has been blessing everybody in the church and everybody has been blessing getting job and getting this and getting that and I'm just here, just just an my life. And the Holy Ghost whispered to her and tell her, I said, listen to me, it's because you don't recognize him as your Lord, you don't recognize him as your King, you don't recognize him as a man of God. What you need to do is go home and go serve him as a man of God. And the blessing will come upon you. And she go home. And she go in the kitchen and she cook. And she makes some nice dinner. You know when some people are come to your yard for visit? <laughs> uh, and you take out the whole is a full, is big plate. Them the nice ones, them. We're not even your husband eat out that. You understand? <laughs> and she, she make, him, make up him stuff nicely, man. And when he come home, she serve him with honor. And... So the husband Frank and the husband was saying, why, why, why all of these dishes and all of these nice things that have been treated so nice? Mm -hmm. And the, the wife got up on her knee in front of the husband right there and said, listen to me. This time you are not just my husband, but you are my king. You are my priest. Mm -hmm. You are my Lord. And I, you are the man of God over my life. You are my father. Put on here and bless me. Mm -hmm. And the man said immediately, the anointing of the king the priesthood of the ox and the anointing that release upon the people in the ministry come upon him Amen. and him lay man upon him wife and so receive the same anointing Amen. and grace Amen. and immediately everything that was happening to the people in the church begin to happen to him so even though pastor is pastor and she come into church she has to see me as not just her husband and her lord and her king but also her, her father so that she can be blessed like anybody else around. Mm -hmm. So the, the covering is very important. It is. Very important. It is. Thank you. Thank you. And we had started the, the, the lesson dealing with children, female children, and the covering from father, so that when you cross into your marriage, your father takes you to another father who is your husband, because he's supposed to protect you and cover you. So these are principles. One of the things that I, uh, that, that I, look at in cultures is that 
when it comes to the Caribbean culture, and if I'm wrong, ladies, tell me I'm wrong. What I notice in the Caribbean, our culture is different. When it comes to the Western, our culture is different. When it comes to the African culture, when it comes to Spanish culture, the, the, the husband is really the leader. They bow to the husband. And the Spanish, my, my, my family is Spanish. Um, the African, the African, they understand that submission principle. But what I find with the Western, and more particularly the Caribbean, we don't really understand submission. We really, really don't. And I'm telling you from, from experience, when you see churches, when you see African churches, and I'm giving that example because I study African culture, I study the churches in Africa, it is one of the most easiest thing to, to submit when it comes to the, the husband and wife because it's cultural. They are taught. The girls are in a position where they are always protected. In the Muslim culture, the girls have to cover their face. They have to cover because they are, they are seen as the weaker and they need a covering and they need a protection. So when it comes to submitting in the Islamic culture, in the, in the, uh, in the African culture, in that part of the area, world, it is easier because it's cultural. And when it comes to church, the Bible says, submit one to another. Jesus submitted to God. Jesus even submitted himself and showed that it is not a bad thing. And if Jesus could do it, how much less us who are supposed to be his followers? Because if we are saying we love God, the Bible says, how can you say you love me and you keep not my commandment? It is a commandment, it's not a choice. And all of these principles I was disagreeing with and I erred. Ladies, I'm telling you, I erred. So when it comes to the Caribbean and the Western culture, what I find is that we need to be taught how to submit. And I said this, um, I, I think it was the, the, the second anniversary. I had a very <coughs> difficult time submitting because of my position. And dads could tell you, I gave him trouble. Sorry, dads. I did. Because I because of my position of what I thought. And I didn't understand about submitting in a church. I didn't. Until I was taught. If you want the anointing to flow on your life, if you want to see the manifestation of that anointing, it means that you have to submit. And when you submit, you're also submitting to God. Because you're opening up yourself, God, use me. How can God use you if you're not open to be used? How can God use you if you're not submitting? So let me ask you ladies. I'm starting with Patrice. Do you want God to use you? What area would you like God to use you? Where he sees fit. Where he sees fit. I want you to write in your book what, you, what area that you want God to use you. Moms, what area do you want God to use you in your life? Submission. Submission. Senior pastor. <laughs> what other area would you like God to use you? In every, I, just, my, I just want my life to be open to his will. Wherever he leads, okay. I follow. Very good. David, yeah. where would you like God to lead you? Me, you could skip to ask me for a second. Do you don't worry about me. You just I answer. I, I don't have any answer. You don't have any answer? You. Not me. Not you. You don't want God to use you? I want God to use me, but <laughs> everywhere. Everywhere. My sister. In my weakest areas. In your weakest areas. Sister Angela. It would be according to his will. According to his will. Which is good. Which is good. 
Because if we intend, if you see this journey, if we want to grow, we have to open up ourselves to grow. And the only way that's going to happen is if we are prepared to submit. The submission starts with God. It starts with your covering, your spiritual father. And then it continues with the members. Submit each other. Submit. We must submit ourselves to each other. Are we together? Yes. Good. So we understand and we saw the punishment for disobedience. Genesis 3.16 where Eve for her disobedience, for her failing to submit to her husband. The Bible says, the scripture says, he, your husband, will rule. And the, 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 the amplified version says, with authority over you and be responsible for you. That is where the covering comes in. Are we together? Yeah. Okay. Now, let us look at the covering as to the husband and wife now. Now we're not looking at, we won't go to Genesis because the commandment is for the man now to love his wife in Ephesians. That is his command. And that command also comes with a promise. He said, and that is where, when, when, when um, Prophet spoke about um, Proverbs 18, 21, he who finds a wife, he who finds a wife, somebody finish it for me because it's a passage that we always speak about. Find it. He that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and in favor of the Lord. And obtain. What is that word favor? Anybody know what that means? Blessings, benefits, benefits. I look up the word favor. He said, God, it, it, it is God giving the ability to do something which is humanly impossible for us to do. So the woman come with a gift, right or wrong? Yes. It come with a thing called favor. Yep. Who gets it? Yep. Who gets this favor? We? Yes. No. The man gets the favor. He yep. obtains. Obtains means you get. You take. It is yours. You obtain. The man obtains the favor. So when the woman is walking down the aisle, what is she walking with? We're walking with favor. Yep. We're walking with favor. That's a benefit. And if the man is walking with favor, I say it stands to reason that it is easy for him to love his wife as Christ loved the church. Because the favor gives him the capacity to follow and abide by the commandment. Ephesians 5.23 speaks to the husband being the head that is never going to change ladies it is never going to change the wife is to submit to the husband that is never going to change if we look at first peter and this is the last passage i'm going to i'm going to read first peter 3 17 the last part of it it says, in the same way you husband live with your wife in an understanding way, with great gentleness and tact, and with an intelligent regard for the marriage relationship, as with somebody physically weaker, since she is a woman. The husband is to show her honor. Patrice, you had asked this question last week. The husband is to show her honor and respect. As a fellow heir of the grace of life so that your prayers will not be hindered and your prayers will be effective so when God have a purpose for us it is for our own good wives if you submit you allow your husband to be obedient 
your husband is obedient, it is easier for him to follow God's commandment so that he is not in breach of the covenant. Because if he's breached the covenant, you, the wife, lose out. He, the husband, lose out. So it's a win-win if women learn how to submit. And Angela is, Mr. Angela is smiling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because what happened, right? It's like, for example, I talked with scriptures so with my husband. I was tell you, okay, well, the man would be like the Lord, and he said, no, 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 he don't want to be no Lord. He only one Lord, one God. So he don't want to be that. But the husband and the get no problem with that. But the Lord part. Does he know the scripture? Oh, Where he come from? No, but he just maybe don't understand. That's why I said some things the woman might understand certain things more spiritual than the man. You more know it's spiritual. So you like bring him to Bible class. You bring him. And then we can reason together. Because whatever, whatever I am teaching, it will always come from the scripture. I will never deviate. Yes. It's in Ephesians. Mm -hmm. It's in Ephesians. Ephesians 5. Also, there's a scripture that speaks about, I don't know if Dave could find that scripture. I love to give Bible, and the reason why I love to give Bible, because Bible answer all my questions, and, and tell me what is right, amen? So I always love to go to scriptures. There's a scripture that says that um, the, the, if, the, if the husband is um, in a fault, or, or, or the unbelieving husband, then the, the husband, the wife, can, can um, and sanctify him. and save the husband, the, un yes. the unbelieving husband. Yeah. That means she has put him in a position. What the, what, the, what, the, what the Bible is actually saying is that it's the first wife Peter. must become a prayer warrior. It's first it's first Peter. Peter. Or she be the leader spiritually. No, no, him. no, she's not. She's not a leader because spiritually. Because she's trying to help you spiritually. No, no because you remember. And two shall become one. 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 That means when you're helping, in your helping your self. Yeah. That simply means when you are praying, you are not just praying for him as a husband. You are praying for yourself. Yeah. For the Bible said, build up yourself in your holy faith. Yeah. So by the time you start to pray for him, what you are doing is fatting up your spirit and booting up yourself and climb higher in God. That is what exactly the scripture is referring to. And so you are not just building a husband, you are building yourself. Because the best way how to build yourself is to push your husband. Mm -hmm. That's one of the best ways to, to, to build yourself. Mm -hmm. And another thing too, I guess, because she was saying when she having Bible study with her husband, the love thing. I guess he doesn't understand the concept of it. Right. That's why he's kind of, okay, we know that there's only one Lord, one, yes. one, one God and Father. But probably he doesn't understand it in the concept of the, the institution of marriage. I think that's where the that's what he needs to understand yeah. the concept of the yes. lordship. Yes. Because yes. I think he's taking the literal meaning right. of Lord, mm -hmm. not it, and, and the, the, the literal meaning of Lord yes. God, mm -hmm. but not in the office of marriage, right. where the lordship come in as the head. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, it is it is saying you are the head, you are leading me. Yeah. And and the passage is 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 first Peter three, one, where he said, In the same way you wives be submitted to your own husband. Subordinate, not as inferior, but out of respect for the responsibilities entrusted to the husband and their accountability to God, because the husband is accountable to God. He said, and so partnering with them, so that even if some, the men, do not obey the word of God, they may be won over to Christ without discussion by the godly lives right. of their wives. Mm -hmm. And then verse 5 it says, for in this way, in former times, the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves, being submissive to their own husband and adapting themselves to them. Just, verse 6, just as Sarah obeyed Abraham, following him and having regard for him as the head of their house, calling him Lord. And then there is an asterisk for the word Lord. So it's used in that context, right. like, like, like Pastor was saying. Yeah. So when we study the Bible, what, what I, when, I, when, I, when I start studying the Bible, I had my King James Version. 
and then I, I had the Amplified. What it Amplified does is to help you. It amplifies the, 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 the meaning, so it makes it easier for you to study. So when you're studying the Bible, you ask the Holy Ghost to guide you, and the Holy Ghost is going to guide you. He's going to push, he's going to show, he's going to... If you want to go deep, the Holy Ghost is going to go... He's going to carry you deep. But you have to want it. You have to open up yourself to it. Bible sweet, oh. He's sweet, oh. And he's sweeter when the Holy Ghost whisper to you and say, God at this passage. God at this. He's sweeter. And the presence of the Lord, it makes it so sweeter when you're studying the Bible. So I'm encouraging you, ladies, it is not a bad thing. I know I've been there. And when I say I've been there, trust me, 31 years of marriage, trust me, I was there. And I found it difficult to submit. So if you're having difficulty to submit, you're preparing yourself for marriage. I call myself betrothed. Because I am betrothed. I don't know who is the lucky man, but I am betrothed. In the spirit realm, I am betrothed. So if you're planning and you, you say, I, I, I'm, I'm planning to get married, and you're asking God to find your mate for you, then you have to do your part in preparing yourself for your betrothed. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you have to prepare yourself and ask yourself, am I prepared to be submissive? Because that is your role. That is your role. Simple. Okay? Thank you. Father, I lift up each and every one of us before you, Father. Father, for the women who are single, Father, let them understand, Father, that your word is not burdensome. It is not, Father. It is just for us to open up Father, open our eyes, open the ears of our understanding so that we may know what is your will for us in terms of our relationship, Father. Father, let your will be done in our lives. Let your will be done in the lives of each and every one of us for the calling, Father, that you have on our lives, Father. Father, we say, let it be so. Let your will be done in our lives, Father. As you have called us to that purpose, let your will be done in our lives, Father. Father, help us. Help us to be submissive. Submissive in all things, Father. Not only in marriage, but submissive, Almighty oh, God, to your Lordship. Submissive, mighty God, to the head. Submissive, Father, to all leaders. Submissive, most of all, Father, to you. Let your will be done in our lives, Father. Help us to submit our mind, our wills, and our emotions to you so that you can use Use us, use us, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Father, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Glory to God. It is well, it is well, it is well. I want to um, let's give a clap for the teacher. Amen. 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 The teacher has given us some good word. Amen. And we, we are just... Um, eating of the word. Me, myself, I'm, I'm eating words and I, I, you know, strengthening myself with the word and at the same time trying to be a better husband, you know, because we all know that as a husband, we are the head and we have to make um, our wives be comfortable and being, you know, just being happy all the time. And so, as I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm asking questions. I'm saying, Lord, if there's any area of my life that I need to submit so that I can be a proper leader to my wife, you know, and to guide her in the right way so that she can be happy because there, there's, a, there's a, a scripture that says, you know, if your wife, if you don't be right with your wife, your prior as a man can be ended. Yeah, see, so when you go to God and pray, it would not answer because your 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 affliction in the home. So the man has to make sure that he's the is is you know leading properly so that we can able to um move forward. Amen. And so when we when we have a suggestion in the home, is is not for um two people to, to tag and war over a, a, a situation. What will happen is that the the 
the lady will lay her cards on the table, always being so. And I always tell men, let the lady lay, lay her cards on the table. When she lay her cards on the table, then you listen to her. And when you listen to her as an end, then you solve the problem. And then when you solve the problem, then when your issue you now need to be dealt with, you try to find a right place, you know, over two cup of tea, you know, a little rose and have fun, you know. And then you let you know that, um, oh, 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 how am I doing, you know. I know that you discussed something and um, I've been trying my best to lead properly so that you can be happy. Are you, are you, are you looking at how I'm moving? Um, am I, am I de developing a, a new attitude? Um, how do I, you know, you ask your wife, you know, all these things and so on. And because what the, what the leader is doing is summarizing her, her information to see if she's satisfied. Now, if, he's satis if she's satisfied, and he is dissatisfied about something. That's the time now when he will say to the wife, wife, you know, I've been trying my best, you know, as you said tonight, you know, and so on. And um, I've been really, you know, pleased at myself as well, the way I'm operating and so on. But I have a little card to I want to throw on the table, you know. And, um, you know, I know that submission is important. And, um, you know, in this area, I realize that you're not submitting because... Every evening you come in, you take out the shoes and try to do away. Uh, <laughs> and I really don't like it because at cleanliness is godliness. And so when you, when you come home, take off your shoes and do away. And then come inside. You understand? And don't just come and jump, you know, in the bed and think that, you know, it's a go. Go and um, take off your clothes and get yourself together. And then go and, you know, cut up your nails and get the thing together. And then you go to the kitchen. You know, you can't just go in there with every long thing and needing dumping and getting to me. And, you, you know, I'm just saying, you know, and getting yourself. But, but when he lay his card on the table, you must be able to receive it as a woman, as a wife. Because if you can't receive it, then you're being unfair. Because the leader listen to you. A good leader listen. Yeah, a good leader listen. Yes. I said, when, I, when, I, when God give me a member and anything wrong, I always love to listen. If something go wrong and, and you see that person and something and you don't see them around, you know something, bear in mind that that person never come to me, never sit me down as a father and said to me, Dad, so and so, I don't understand so and so. This is what it is. How do you think about this? I don't do this, I don't do that. You know, if that person come to me like that, I'm going to operate and listen as a father, right? And we resolve the matter together. That's what a father will do. Yes, I remember a time, right? And I'm coming down. I remember I'm in my young Christianity. I, I just became a lay minister. And I was in a church. And I was submitting, but I wasn't submitting good. Come here, man. Me, me, me just get married and uh, pastor come tell me foolishness and things. So what happened is that I began to, I was rebelling a little bit, you know, and so on. And my father called me because the other pastor was under the same covering as me. And so he called me and he said to me, son, you are not bathing yourself, you know, and so on. And he began to chastise me. And sometimes he come up in me and say, man, I should do this, I should do this, I should da, 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 da. But I always ask myself, do I want to be an ordinary Christian? Do I want to be like everyone? Do I want to just come church and be a clap, shout, praise the Lord, and go home, and years after years? You know many people come to church and they get 65, 70, and God never use them. Because they never submit. Their submission is very important. You understand? That's why anytime I'm going to put leaders in position, I always ask firstly, are you married? Are you single? Do you have a boyfriend? Do you have this? Because we're looking at submission. We're looking at everything around there. You understand? So that you can be well. And I, 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 I didn't want to submit. And then my father had to put me under every manners. You understand? And when he put me under every manners, I submit. But then after a few months again, I didn't do nothing this time. I really didn't do anything. And he just looked at me and just saying to himself, I'm going to talk to God about this man. Who is this man? My son. And guess what happened? God telling pressure me. 
And the man just come to church. The man fly all the way from Florida. And come all the way to St. Kitts. And the man called me and my wife. You know, no, what my wife? My wife not even know what happened. No, we don't know nothing. And I said, who are you? When you come to church on Sunday, sit in the middle, sit down there. So I just said to me. And I have to sit in the middle for one year under submission. One year I submit. And I could never forget there was a big crusade in St. Kitts with about three, four thousand people under the tent. And he called me up. And he said, This man, God has asked me to put him under submission and to train him because he would become a mighty asset to me. And I didn't just put him under submission, I put his wife to. They are innocent. But these, these are the pressure that I have to put him under. Because if I don't put him under that, then he, would have, he will damage people. Because everybody flew at him, he will get upset. So I have, to, I have to bend him. And that's the same night I was released. So submission, and I'm, I'm just giving, I'm just broadening the submission, right? Submission is very important. If you want to go somewhere, you have to submit. If you go to a school and the teacher is teaching, and you just all, always don't go back now and submit, you bad and you are just chatting and doing all type of foolishness. You think you think you, your teacher really going to going to study with you? No. And you not but you, you still right and graduate and don't come out with one subject. I'm telling you. These are reality. I have seen many children um, do that. It's very, very, very important. So we, we, we have to submit. That's why when I have my children in my telephone blank, if I can't submit in a bus, you know what time it is. Even, even, even purity, if, if I come to church and see she had a baby anyway, I put her in the holy one for her. Because she must submit. It, it, you are in the house of the Lord. Submission is very important. And so as, as you all go through as, as ladies, you know, um, more ladies here than men, you know, so um, uh, please submit. I hear Miss, Miss Bevan say that, um, Teacher Bevan, that, um, you know, it's, it was a hard time for she to submit. I'm telling you, she, oh my God, I, I, I actually fight with this lady to get her to submit. I fight with her, I dig down with her. I mean, because you're looking at her position and her and where she 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 sits in her office and, and everything, and she she don't want to submit. Days after call, I'm, I'm pull her up. But one thing I'm glad for that each time she says something, I tell her, I said, go to this passage, look at this passage, and she read it and she understand it, and she will call and say, Dad, you're right. Right. See me here as a father. I submit to my spiritual father and I submit to two others. We call them the true party. That tutors me. So we have one spiritual father, but you can have many tutors. You understand? And I submit to tutors and I submit to my father. Why? Because no man is an island. No man stands alone and no man is too big to learn. Amen? So if you can't submit, you can't be leader. You understand? And that is that is why you see um, Sunday, you know, we, we do the washing of the feet and so on. Why we do the washing of the feet? Because Jesus, he says in order to become a leader, you have to be a server. Right? And before the disciples um, 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 lose Jesus, can Jesus go back? Right? And I realized my lady over there, see that she knows her Bible. You understand very well. Amen? And she was um, saying, Jesus washed their feet. Right? He put on his apron and he washed their feet. Right, Sister Angela? And he washed their feet and he dried. That means he become a servant to them. And he served them and said, do this in remembrance. Yes. And so when you when you when you drink the when you drink the, the wine and you eat the body, uh, your your remembrance when you wash your, your brother feet, you wash your sister feet, and then you are submitting as a as a servant. You say, Lord, see me, I'm a servant. Me no bigger than nobody. I am submitting to you, Lord. So see me here, you can use me. Right? And so if you are if you are 
putting yourself in that high position that you cannot, you only want to, to, to be used you know, this and, and you cannot serve, then you cannot be a leader. It is very important that we have that. I think I give about, maybe about 10 scriptures and that, and that um, old sermon on Sunday, right? Um, Sister Angela wasn't here, so she would have not hear it, but we give a whole scripture on it about the washing of the feet and um, what Jesus do. And he, he speaks about every, every nitty gritty of the Bible where he teach the disciples what to do. You understand? So that you can be a server. So if there is a server, then there must be a leader. You understand? It's because you are serving. Right? Yes. So it's just like you're in a, in a supermarket and you are the, 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 um, the cashier. So you are serving. Right? But there is a owner. Alright? So God own all, but we are servers. Amen. So if you're in the usher department, you're in the hospitality department, wherever department you are, there's still a server. That's why you have the disciplinary board, you have the, the um, planning committee board, and then you have the, the, um, the board of directors. Uh, these are things that sit eyes and, 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 and instruct, because all of these are servers. Amen? Glory to God. So in order for a church to move forward, then all these must be put in place. So if you go to a church and you don't see these things, run for your life, because you're in trouble. You understand because it's not it's, it's not properly structured and it's all for the fame and fortune just check it out properly you will look and see the witchcraft right between here amen glory to god that's why everyone must come to bible study so that we can learn amen because it's important to learn amen glory to god don't we learn something tonight amen, amen. glory to god amen i'm glad for all of you amen i, I my spirit is telling me who you are but um i just um you know, want to say welcome. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And um, God will do what he has to do. Amen? Because he's a great God and he is a God that answers and answers in, in the right time and due time. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. And once we um, believe in God, then all things are possible. Amen? Amen. It's, a, it's a lot of things. That I, um, I have seen some things that is in the word of the Lord and, and sometimes when I see it, I, I wonder, you know, do you know that in the Bible um, there's a scripture that says, Love worketh no heal to his neighbor. Mm -hmm. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Yes. That's another case. I mean, we, we, we have to study because if we don't study, and we will, we, if we go, we go out on the street and we get in, involved in another doctrine, and so because we don't know the word. We get carried away and doctrinized by demonic forces. There are many people I see get indoctrinated and they indoctrinated and they move away. You understand? And they've been deceived by the plot of the enemy. It is very, very, very serious. You know? And we, we, we do some things and then we say that, you know, what is what and what is what. But God is great. Amen. Can you take down this for me? so that we can be able to move on. If you have an offering, please to bring it at this time. Um, Purity, can you get the basket for me? Uh, I'm one of you, amen. And we are going to um, just give some people to the honor and glory of God, amen. Yes, you can cut now, God bless you. Come on, you on my Sunday nothing. And um, stay focused, people on the social media, social platform. I want to thank you for watching, amen, and um, every Thursday night, amen, it's um, Bible study. Get your pen and your paper and prepare to learn, amen, as God will enlighten you in Jesus' name. God bless the social media, amen.